So we're here at James' shop checking out his new car. What's up, James? Mr. Mike. How's it going? Well, I got about that much more to go before I can be done with it. Holy smoke. That's a, that's a pretty big list. That's, uh, that's how all of them start out with a big list. And then you narrow them down. Narrow it down. I just want to know, and I think all of us want to know, you're probably one of the most diehard race, drag racing guys we've ever come across. There is no stop or quit in you. Well, maybe one of the stupidest. <laughs> I don't know. Not stopping and quitting. But this is an amazing build. Could you tell us a little bit about it? What kind of motor expectations out of the car? This is the car I met Monty Smith with in 2012 at Drag Week. And we actually won second place in Power Adder Modified when it had a 605 in it. <clears throat> I bought the car back after Monty died as a memorial to Monty Smith. Wow. So that's the motor that Monty and I did for Reaper. It's the car I met Monty with, and I thought, well, I'll just put the motor that came out of Reaper, the nitrous motor, in this car, and, and I'm doing the car to go do Drag Week. Wow. So you're going to build this car for Drag Week? This car is built for Drag Week. Yes. Wow. Uh, for the people that follow basically no uh, no prep in my page, and but people don't know that you you do all forms of drag racing. And could you do, tell us a little bit about Drag Week for people who are not uh, really week, interested? I did I did the Rocky Mountain Race Week. Okay. This September in my truck, oh, we had a blast. We had a real blast with it. Um, it's just the ultimate challenge. It's not just take your race car. You have to drive it. And you can't have a support vehicle, so you have to drive it from spot to spot, which I think we went 11, 1,200 miles, something like that. Wow. Which, um, it, it's just a lot more fun. I mean, it, it you actually, it's, it's a game of attrition. So you, you're not actually trying to race. You're not trying to outrun anybody. You're trying to turn in the fastest average ET for the class you're in, which this car will run in power adder modified. Oh, what does that particular class entail, particularly? It has to have, um, like this has a factory frame. This is actually truly a back half car. It has a factory frame all the way back to the wheel tubs. It's got factory front suspension. Uh, class this, this car races in, it and Pro Street are exactly the same classes, except in Pro Street, you can actually run fiberglass printers. This car is all steel. All steel. All steel, all glass. There's no, the, the only thing, fiberglass on the whole car is the hood and the uh, deck lid. Hmm. Everything else is all steel. So wow. factory core support and all that. Is. Uh, is there any chance you're going to be doing any no prep racing with this car? No. No. I'm going to street race it and I'm going to take it to drag week. Street race it? Yeah, that... I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to take a break from the racetrack stuff. Yeah. After losing Reaper and, and the Yanko car, I've got the new car sitting there. I just, I, I don't go back to street races. That's what I've been wanting to do for a while anyway. Yeah. So no. I'm concentrating on getting this done, my Chevy 2 done, the Camaro done. Yeah. That car is actually building for Stacy for drag week, but now we're just going to go street race it. Wow. Going back to your roots. Going back to what I love to do. It's, it's amazing because that's something that uh, people that actually follow your page uh, people that don't follow uh, the Reaper SS page on Facebook or YouTube should. Uh, he has a lot of information about how you basically been wanting to do street racing for the longest time. Get back in it without the whole. The, the show got me away from it. Yeah. And and the, the the cars that we're running now they're not street cars. I mean th this <laughs> this takes that this takes the street car thing and stretches it laser thin. But when I drive it on drag week, I mean, it, it's a 756 inch, five inch board space motor, but I'm going to ride this bitch on drag week. Wow. Which will prove that it is a street car. What, what kind it's of got gas? It's full exhaust all the way out the back. Wow. Like full exhaust with mufflers. Yes. Oh, I see. I see the tailpipes. Look at that. I see it. First time I took this car to drag week, it had a five inch exhaust and two MagnaFlow mufflers that kicked out underneath the seat. The most miserable time. That was when I met Jeff Lutz, as a matter of fact. No way. And when I met Jeff Lutz, he goes, 
He goes, man, that is the prettiest, loudest fucking car on drag week. Because we come rolling in Tennessee about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and Jeff literally fell out of his bed. It woke him up and scared him. But, yeah, it was miserable. We were driving with the – and back then, the nitrous motor was on Alpha N, and I didn't know jack shit about Alpha N. Didn't know nothing about any of that stuff because I was still too old school. So every time we'd hit a hill, it'd go lean fat, lean fat, which causes it to pop. So we were in the middle of the night driving with our feet over the bars, me and my brother, holding the doors open, trying to keep from getting a fish fixated. Yeah. Yeah, how did you say that right? Trying to keep from dying because <laughs> the fucking exhaust was so bad in it, and it was stupid loud. I'll never make that mistake again. Oh, yeah. There is actually a cutout in the exhaust if you look down under here. Up here. Uh, an electric cutout? Nope. You want both the plate out of it? It's got a plate that caps it off, then you bolt these off the racetrack. Yeah. And then you have to run through the exhaust. Oh, wow. So we'll be hanging some flames out this way on this car. That is going to be one badass car for sure. This guy's got two huge fuel cells in the back. What kind of gas do you run? Uh, drive it on pump gas. Pump gas. Wow. Drive it on pump gas and then reach over and you flip I don't know if the steel deck lid would be lighter than this. How much uh, fuel does each tank hold? 20. 20 gallons each. 20 gallons. I have an SUV that holds only 14 gallons. I have a 756 inch motor that gets 4 miles a gallon. So. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you kind of need the 20 gallons there. But the way this is all set up, there's actually a switching valve right here. And if I want, if I want to turn around and drive on this one, if I want to leave both switching valves and run them on pump gas, yeah. And then when we get close, I shut one of them off, run this tank out, put C16 in it, turn this valve off, and then run on C16. Wow, I it, mean C23. C23. Sorry. Wow, it, it's sort of like those diesel trucks that have two tanks. They flip the switch and then they could run the second tank. Pretty much. Wow. Does it even help out with traction with having two tanks like that? Well, I don't know. I'm not telling that. <laughs> You're going to find out, right? <laughs> and all the way to get in the back, especially since this car's on small tire. It's awesome. on 29, 5, 10, 5 tire. Wow. Now, it'll take a big tire. It won't take a 36, but you can run a 30. Probably put a 30, 33 on it. I know it'll fit a 33. I don't know if it'll fit a 34, 5 without jacking the car up. This car sets super low. But it's not set up for wheelie bars on this car. No. Oh, it, it's got. But right there's the wheelie bars for it. Huh. Check this out. Hang your race car to see with the tow hitch. Oh, so you could pull your little trailer with it. Yes. Although. <coughs> excuse me. So the nitrous bottles go here. Over there is where the battery is. And I actually got. I'm, I'm going to make a compartment in the back. Wow. Yeah, it's getting carpet. Right now, I'm taking weight out of the car because it's stupid heavy. Like 4,000 pounds. 4,000 pounds. Yeah. Wow. So, there's some, there's some, there's a lot of metal. Like, I took the double tunnel out of it and replaced it with carbon fiber. So, you're going back to a real real car is what people normally say it's what's a real car and running back on the street where you started off and on top of that going back to nitrous which anybody who's been following you for many years know that nitrous is where everybody got to know you doing uh do you do your own nitrous tunes on the cars yes or? okay i was taught by the best monty smith wow so you got some uh, a lot of nitrous knowledge going into this car. Amazing. Uh, the blue car is going to be a nitrous car too. Matter of fact, it's got the 615 
going in it that came out of this car that I ran on drag week. Oh, okay. So that car again, that car's all steel. It doesn't have anything fiberglass, not even the hood. Wow. I can't wait to see this car on a stoplight and see the look in the person next to you's face and be like, yeah, uh, this is a, a real a real car here. Station, I used to drive this thing to Sonic. Oh, no way. Yeah. Wow. That's where the fun is with, with, with me and these cars. It used to be, believe it or not, I used to have a rule. If I can't drive it on the street on pump gas, I wouldn't own it. Okay. Reaper was the first one. Reaper was the first car. That was the first car that I couldn't drive on the street on pump gas and then switch fuel and race it. Wow. We we actually seen you actually drive all your cars. You have several cars and you actually do drive them on the street and you actually take Brantley with you. Oh, yeah. The, the Nova's his favorite. It, That's our ice, ice cream car. The undefeated Nova in No Prep Kings. No one could get around that car. Nobody even got close to that car. <laughs> Oh my god. And now you're building this, which is like almost done. This car is Th a... Thanks to HPP, it's almost done. Wow. Because I had a bad situation with this car. Things didn't go right with the person that started it. And uh, I was actually fixing to pull the motor out of it and crush it with my Skytrack. Really? And HPP stepped up and said, hey, everything you've done for us, man, let us, let us finish that car. And they took the car and got it to where it is. They did the wiring and uh like beautiful paint on was this car was a gorgeous car before but it had been chipped up and beat up and scratched up and they repainted it put the motor down in it wired it and got to this point so if it wasn't for ozzy and manny uh at hpp this car wouldn't even it, it wouldn't even exist right now wow this is a perfect memorial car for monty smith this is an amazing car actually wow you see it still got the the drag week sticker from 2012 on the windshield 2012 do you know how much horsepower estimated you probably make with this car just for the people that love uh dyno numbers and all that it dyno when we had it on holly's dyno <clears throat> i'm trying to remember i think on a single 36 it made 18 or 1900 something like that wow wow so we'll see it's got six kits but all the kits are real small except that one in the plenum it's like that car has six kits but they're all little tiny kits like 18s and 16s and the idea is monty and i <clears throat> were working on something when he passed away because monty didn't believe in progressive controllers why said, because you've got multiple kits you don't need progressive you have progressive. It's called three kits. Oh, so when okay. I went to six on this, the whole idea is to overlay those kits. <clears throat> this is the motor that when we went was in Reaper when we went to Lights Out. Hmm. When we went to 984, 60 foot, and yeah. everybody was just like, holy shit. Yeah, I mean, you stood Reaper on, on top of its... Uh... Uh, the wheels, almost like on a wheel stand, and you didn't let up. You, you kept on going. Oh, I love it, it power wheelied a few times and it, it's funny when we were at um, we were at Darlington testing and so we're at Darlington and I can't keep the front end down the car. Yeah, it, it, it's power wheeling at 300 feet and starting to roll up. <clears throat> And Ryan was telling me, put weight on it, put weight on it, put weight on it. Steve Petty walks over and he goes, you know some advice? I said, from you? Hell yes. He said, well, uh, he said, how many kits you got on? I said, I got four on the car. He said, how many you got on? I said, two. He said, turn that third one on right where you see that graph where it starts to climb the gear. And he said, I'll set the front end right back down. <clears throat> sure as shit, I turned the third kit on when it started into the power wheelie, it drove the front end down. I actually, it, it, I had the wheelie bars on the car and I had them turned way up because I'd seen all these cars blowing upside down. Yeah. And I was like, I ain't gonna blow upside down. And the car went up and one time it touched the wheelie bar and rushed over to set the car down. The car was up, it touched the wheelie bar and actually turned the car yeah. and set it down on the wall. And it got the, the control arm, got the control arm and the, and the wheel on one side. So when we rolled in two lights out eight, 
it had the front end knocked off the car. Hmm. We had to replace that and duct tape the front end back together. Uh, anything to make the race. Well, we actually in uh, in qualifying lost two pistons because I'm <clears throat> not a radio guy. So I didn't know I was supposed to change the converter and the gear and all that shit. So it laid on the converter in high gear and got two pistons. So I just turned, we, we put two pistons in it and then I turned some more shit on and it quit laying on the converter. And it went on the on my fifth hit on radials. The car went a 984, 60 foot, went 269 to the 330, laid on the converter, popped two pistons, and went 421 at 150 miles an hour. Wow. Passed before that, it went a 1060 foot, went 269 to the 330, ran 418 at 178. Wow. That's amazing. When you turn on like uh, these small kits, does it hit hard like a plate system, no. let's say, on a street car? No, they're super, super soft. Okay. And that was the theory, and I tested that theory then because I was leaving on a single solenoid 24. Okay. In eight tenths of a second, I was turning on a 28 dual solenoid, and at 1.6 into the run, I was turning on a 32 dual solenoid. Everybody's like, oh, you need to hit it harder. I just set the f second fastest 60 foot of lights out. Well, Don't think, I, I told that guy that was telling me that, I said, what did your car do, 60? He goes, oh, never mind. <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes less is more. That's just more. And that's the, that's the purpose of this car and that car. They have multiple kits, but they're little bitty tiny kits. Yeah. So I, I plan on, that car is actually restricted to where in the class that I'm going to run it at drag week, you cannot go faster than 850. So if you go faster than 850, you're, dis, you're disqualified. But there is no mile an hour rule. So I'm going to try to go 850 at 185 mile an hour. 185 on, in the eighth mile? No, 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 no. Quarter mile. Quarter it's mile. all quarter mile okay. racing. Quarter but 850 <clears throat> at 850 you're going to be somewhere around that 150 range okay 160 so <clears throat> with that car i'm going to turn all the shit on it and then about oh um, i'm actually going to roll everything in hit it hard leaving then roll the nitrous out of it and then just start stacking kits on to build a mile an hour wow well i i, I know me for as a fan, we definitely love to see you back on Nitrous. For some reason, Nitrous was uh, something that a lot of people are, are starting to get away with, uh, get away from and go into Nitrous and boost the cars. They seem to be more reliable. But Nitrous is, is, is an underdog uh, in a lot of these races, but they perform really well for the people that actually know what they're doing. And you're very old school. You, you still stick with the nitrous and you still uh, have all that knowledge uh, applied to it. That's amazing. Nitrous so. is still on the street. It's as close to a pro charger as you're going to get for <clears throat> on the street. You want to be able to leave. You want to hit the tire hard enough. You want to get the car to 60 foot. Yeah. I don't feel like anybody has ever, the, I mean, I, I, People have, but Reaper and every car I own, it, even right down to my silver truck. Yeah. That silver truck, I was foot breaking it, and it pulled the left front tire four feet in the air at, at uh, uh, race week. Wow. Shocked everybody. But I have to make all my shit leave because it's not going to run out the back. Yeah. And that's where a nitrous car has a disadvantage to a turbo car, pro charge car, because you can't turn, you, you have a candle. And you can only burn that wick so fast. Yeah. You turn too much shit on, you're lighting it at both ends and smack it in the middle with a map torch. Yeah. So you just have to make those adjustments with nitrous cars. Now we'll lock up converters and everything they're doing now. Nitrous cars are coming on. Uh, what kind of uh, fuel management system are you running on this car? The only one they make, Holly. Holly? Okay. So I mean, everybody keeps asking me that question, but I never knew they made anything but Holly. Did somebody else make one? <laughs> I don't know. There's a uh, lot, of, a lot of people that run different kinds. I don't know, but Holly seems to be uh, a, a system that a lot of people go with. It seems very reliable and makes a lot of power and and uh, gets the most out of the system. User friendly as well. So that, that that's the key to a Holly. All these systems all do the same thing. Yeah. I don't care what brand it is. 
They supply spark at a certain time. They deliver fuel. Holly has, they're so user friendly. You will yep. go to your nitrous tables, you click on the little nitrous bottle. Yeah. But they also have so much stuff in the nitrous tables that I don't think any system out there is anywhere close to them. I mean, I can put so many safety factors in these cars that the only way it can lose a piston is if I do it on purpose. If you go five rounds, let's say five rounds on a no prep event on a car like this, how many uh, nitrous bottles would you would you expect to go through going Ooh. to the final? Um, this when this motor was in Reaper, it would use about four and a half pounds per pass. That doesn't seem too bad. And that was just running two kits. Huh. For some reason, people have the misconception that you go th a bottle of run or some crazy stuff like that, like a 15-pound bottle, which I, I no, thought it would be impossible. No, I, I, now, I only run mine to a certain point, a certain weight. Actually, I don't set anything by pressure. I set everything by temperature. Why is that? Because temperature is consistent. Ooh. One pressure gauge from another pressure gauge to another pressure gauge, you could have you could have 20 pounds difference between them. But temperature is always temperature. Wow, that's a great tip right there. And I started tuning my stuff on nitrous at lower bottle temperatures to maintain pressure throughout the run. These guys that run 11, 1200, yeah, it does make them hit hard. It makes nice pretty uh, plumes up in the air when you purge them. But at the end of the day, it's about consistency. Why do people purge their cars for, it seems like an eternity at the line? Uh, a lot of fans started uh, asking like, oh, he's wasting all his nitrous on the purge. Uh, wh why is that? Are they trying to bring up bottle they're, temperature or? No, they're trying, to, they're trying to turn down bottle pressure. Oh. If they have too much pressure, it got too hot. There we go. That's, that's the key right there. But if you take a 10 pound bottle, and you make the run at 950, at 950 PSI, at the end of the run, you'll be down around 810, hmm. depending on how much nitrous you use. If you tune the car at 850 and keep the bottle temperature lower, because it doesn't matter, the tune-up is the tune-up. If you tune it for 850, it's going to run exactly the same as it does at 950. The only difference is at the end of a run at 850, you have 815 pounds of bottle pressure. So it keeps it more consistent. If you make a sharp drop, when that bottle pressure drops, motor goes fat, that's what gets pistons and nitrous motors. Hmm. You can never lean one down so far. You'll never hurt a piston and nitrous motor going lean. Wow. What uh, nitrous system are you running? E e everything. I switched when Monty passed away. <clears throat> I've always run nitrous outlet bottles. Okay. And lines and all that. But when, when Monty passed... and Monty Smith is who put me with Dave Vassar. Oh, wow. Wow. So I did not know that. When Monty passed away, I still have all the nitrous kits that Monty done on this. And Dave Vassar redid these and we added it. It had four on it then. Now it's got six. Six. Wow. What's, uh, what's the highest? Actually, no, that's not true. It actually has seven. Seven, seven kits. Yeah. Wow. What's the highest nitrous... Uh shot all combined together you've done in one run when <clears throat> at armageddon one year when i had the pump gas motor in reaper and i was racing brent austin i turned on four kits in 60 feet four kits in 60 feet i turned on all four kits in in the Sixty feet. I bet uh, you're sixty foot pretty good. Well, here was the funny thing about that. So Monty Smith comes walking over, and I lost three pistons. And he comes bouncing over there, and it was funny as hell the way he did it because he goes, "You turned that some bitch up that time, didn't you?" I said, "Yeah, and I don't understand, Monty. For some reason, I lost a piston." He said, "Boy, you're cramming ten pounds of shit into a two pound sack. You couldn't get it out." He said, it's not your tune-up. He said, you got a pump gas motor. You So basically, it was a 36, a 32, a 28, and a 24. And I had them all on at 60 feet. So 
I'm, I'm looking for a picture that I'll show you a picture that's super, super cool. So, to give you an idea how much nitrous that is, that's the flame out of the exhaust. Ah. Do you see that? Yeah, it's right underneath the car. Oh, it's all the way to the back tire. Oh, my God. I turned all the shit on. And then hung a flame four and a half feet out from underneath the car. I mean, there, there's no denying when a nitrous car goes down the track, uh, it's always entertaining. There's always fire, smoke, or some crazy uh, display of, like, raw power that you just don't get out of a turbo car. You know what I mean? So that that's pretty it cool. It depends. Now, if a lot of people are watching no prep kings and no prep kings, you can't run in five. Why is that? I seen a video because it, it, it's got 5% nitromethane. They say that's another power adder. I have seen a picture of Travis Quillen, uh, uh, a pro mod they used to run back in the day, Outlaw Pro Mod, and it had a pair of, it had a pair of turn ups that came up like right here. You're not exaggerating. I'm that not high. exaggerating. They, they, they came out high, and, and I got a picture. Travis, Travis sent me a picture. He's standing behind the car. And I shit you not, there's a flame that fucking tall coming out of it. Oh my god, I would have loved to have seen that. And that was on a that was a turbo car with a link up. Really? Yeah, they put that they hung fucking flame out of that bitch, but it was on M5. Wow. What kind of converter are you gonna run in this car? There's a what do you mean? Yeah, there's only one convert, converter person. That's Neo Martin Chance. Chance. Martin Chance is the only converter they make, isn't it? Hey. Somebody else makes converters? Uh, uh, I don't know. I gotta check the Jex catalog again. Yeah, I have to check that catalog. As far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm pretty uh, set on the people that I use because they're, they're the best in the business. Marty has, I've been at race night at 3 o'clock in the morning and sent him data and told him I was going out there and I might need his help and him turn around and look at the data and tell me what I need to do. That's customer service right there. Marty Chance has been, I mean, I met his dad, yeah. Neil, when I was 13 years old. Oh, wow. Neil Chance. Yep. Back when he ran, raced a funny car. Wow. So, M Marty, as far as I'm concerned, Marty takes so many things into, into play with a converter that, and the converter, I don't care what motor you've got. I don't care what power adder you use. If the converter is wrong, the car is slow. Yeah. What kind of transmission are you going to run in this car? This has an ATI Turbo 400. Oh, a Turbo 400. Wow. Uh, is it going to have like a, like an overdrive option or something added to it? No. No. What, what do you cruise, like, let's say 55 at? What RPM? Oh, it'll cruise at 75, 80 miles an hour at about three grand. Man, I run a three O gear in it. Oh, a three O gear! Wow, that's what uh, Vipers run just to hit that two hundred mile per hour mark. Well, ratio is your friend, but you can do it one of two ways. You can either put ratio on the transmission and take it out of the ass, yeah. the rear gear, which is what I've done with this car and what I've done with that car. A car and like actually, that's one of the tricks to the Nova. The Nova always. Oh. I ran a 350 gear in the Nova. A 350 gear? Yeah. That's not impressive. Uh, tall tier, uh, gear on that car. Wow. That means you could cruise it at a comfortable speed. I, I drive about 80 everywhere I go. Wow. That's amazing. Well, this car is definitely coming along. We appreciate you, ta appreciate you taking time of showing us uh, your new project and... We're just wishing you the best of luck in 2021. I think we're all ready for 2021. Good Lord, yes. <laughs> Put in a rearview mirror. Of 20, uh, 2020 lasts me three lifetimes. Yeah, I, I think uh, everybody can agree we all don't like 2020. It's definitely a year we want to forget. So, sounds great, James. Well, you take care, and we'll see you on the flip side. Thank you, Mike.